Hey everybody, welcome back to Budget Bladesman. So we have a new review up for you today. Uh, to be quite honest, I've been putting off this review for a little while. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later, but first we're going to go over the specs. So today we have, as you can see, the Knives Co. Lander. Let's see right there. Lander. And I actually got this one when he had it on Kickstarter. I'll pull this out of the box here. Let's see, it's blue. Uh, this is designed by Ben Peterson of Blade HQ fame. Uh, you know, he also has at this point the banter, the baby banter, and I believe the large banter at this point now. Uh, there also is this plate. I took it off of this because we're going to do something with it uh, a little bit later. Uh, let me show you the plate. There's this little plate that goes back here uh, that covers up these screw holes. I just took it off just to. For a little bit of speed sake okay so we'll go over the stats real quick so we have an overall length of 6.4 inches a blade length of 2.7 inches it's actually a pretty thin knife at uh, 0.10 inches it's a uh, fairly light uh, it comes over comes under i should say the ounce and inch line it comes in at 2.4 ounces and of course this is a 2.7 inch blade so that's under the ounce and inch line everybody likes to talk about it is a drop point blade it is also d2 I think if you get to focus there, which it's not doing, you can see that Lander D2 there, and it is what is up guys logo. It is tip up, so you can see that, see tip up is right hand and left hand carry, and like I said, you can flip that over. Uh, thumb studs for the opening mechanism is a liner lock, you can see the liner right there. Uh, G10 scales. Uh, these are what he calls fast swap scales, and I'll show you that after we go through the stats and everything else. And this is made in uh, China. And I think if you, again, look at the back side, I think it has it on there. I don't remember where it does, but I know it does say China on here somewhere. Oh. Anyways, it is made in China. It does say it on for sure on the box. We can pull the box over here. Uh, if it wants to focus for us. Get my hand out of the way there. But it does say, there we go. Made in Yangling, China, designed in the USA. Let's get the box out of the way here. So we'll do our comparisons real quick. And this knife looks a lot like a lot of knives. So the first one it's going to kind of look like is the K-Bar Dozer. I mean, this is the one to me that kind of looks like the most. You can kind of see, if we get them side by side, similar blade shape, similar handle. But of course, this is rounded at the top and kind of um, curved at the back. But just the overall profile of the knife looks pretty similar. And then, of course, we'll have our other comparison knife. The Spider Coat Tenacious. You can see with that one, it's a little bit smaller. It's pretty much almost exactly this size. It's ever so slightly smaller. It's kind of hard to do it at this angle, but it's a little bit... It's definitely smaller than the uh, dozer, if we pull up the dozer here. Just a hair smaller overall length. So in the middle, it's basically uh, it's a little bit on the smaller side. So we'll get those two out of the way here. And we'll show you a couple other knives to compare it to. So, uh, oops, pulled off the wrong knife. So let's put the lander back on. And uh, I believe since he does do a lot of uh, stuff with we and Civivi, that his manufacturer is Civivi. And so here is a Elementum. Again, you can see very similar, just an overall profile. Let's get that up so you can kind of see it better. You can see it very similar. But again, this knife is pretty plain and just really similar to a lot of different knives. And then we'll also show you the uh, baby banter. I do not have the regular banter. And so, of course, you're going to obviously see the design cues on this one. You can see the squared ends there. And just the handle shape, the knife shape. And of course, the kind of the color that's his favorite color is what they call Ben Blue. So you can see that. So we'll get that. We'll get this closed up and we'll put this in the pocket. 
Let's see what it looks like in there. So we've got these in the old short pockets. And you can see it's fairly, it's, you know, deep ride. So we'll get all the way in there. Again, you get your hand in there. Plenty of room. Pull out the pocket here. You can see plenty of room in there. The knives are way over here. So you have plenty of room for a front pocket wallet or multi-tool or whatever else you might carry in that pocket. And so again, these are fast swap scales. So we'll do this, see if we can do this real quick here, at least on the show side. So you see there's these two screws here. So uh, they're T6. So we'll pull these off real quick. And the scale comes right off, as you can see. And basically they're so they just go right over the top of the liners. So we'll pull these over. And so actually I have some, um, the good thing about it is, and he's talked about this plenty, is I have some um, homemade scales. A very good friend of mine, one of my best friends, actually made these for me. Uh, so he has an uh, open design on his website on navsdite.com where you can actually go and get the um, specs for it. And if you have a 3D printer, you can actually print your own scales. So we'll... Put those on real quick and you can see snapped right on and we'll put these back on real quick again this is pretty quick as long as you don't have fat fingers like me you can get everything nice lined up the first time or the second time or if you're not doing this over camera which is also fun there we go, all set, so that's pretty pretty quick. Uh, he also does have his own scales too, so if you wanna buy scales, like I have the white ones here from Knives, you, Navs, I should say, you can buy them from there as well. So, one of the bad things about this knife is it has a pretty soft detent. Now, and normally you would think that's just a good you know, action, but the detent in this thing is actually pretty weak. I wish I could do this on camera where I could pop it open and kind of just shake it but I can't really do it on camera but it will if you shake it hard enough you can actually pop it just open and why is that important well if this is in your pocket and it just kind of opens up like that it can do this and so the reason I can't really recommend this knife is the best friend of mine who made these scales for me actually had this knife open up like this on his pocket and open up uh a significant cut basically from his hip to his knee the uh knife opened up in his pocket and he went to you know get ready in the morning went to pull up his pants and knife opened up you know was open like that he didn't realize it and opened all the way up and basically sliced him from his hip to the back of his knee uh luckily he didn't need stitches but it was a pretty pretty significant cut so now pretty much every time i carry this knife i have that in my head now i don't know if that is just his knife um or you know if that's all his knives but i know this one if i shake hard enough i can pop it open so that tells me that the detent's not very strong on this so like again, again i don't know if that's every knife i don't know that if that's just his knife and my knife but i know that the detent is not you know i don't really need a lot of force to pull that open you know if it does like that you know you got that little part sticking up and you know, that catches on something and pulls it out. I mean, I'm not pulling very hard. I'm barely putting any pressure because I obviously don't want to cut myself. But that could be a problem. And obviously for my friend, it was a problem. You know, I the, the cool thing about this knife, obviously, is the fast swap scales. And the only company that I know that does that besides him is um, Three Rivers Manufacturing. But their knives are obviously USA made and they're at a $200 price point. These are... Uh, I didn't mention the price, but these are anywhere between $60 to $80, depending on the version. They do have a 14C28N uh, with my Carta Scales version. That's about $80, but just their basic version is $58. So it's not pricey, um, but it is, you know, just kind of a generic looking knife design. I mean, there's nothing spectacular about it. And I, I'm not trying to rip uh, Ben because he does seem, I do follow him on uh, social media and he does seem like a really nice guy. 
um, and I, it's not his fault, you know, the quality control. Um, but I will say that this one I did purchase uh, on his Kickstarter. I did back his Kickstarter to get this off the ground. Um, and the one that I got uh, for my buddy, actually, I had bought when they went live on Blade HQ. So I got his from Blade HQ. So I don't know that they're the same quality control or what have you. But it just, uh, in my experience, um, for me, this knife isn't going to be one that I'm going to recommend to people. Just because, you know, at this point, price point, you know, you can go and get the K-Bar Dozer, the 2D version. Uh, of course, not swappable scales, but very similar design. And I think that comes in at around $40, whereas this comes in at $60. So, you know, or even if you want something where you can have multiple colors of scales, uh, there's tons of aftermarket scales nowadays for the Elementum. Even though I'm not a huge fan of this knife, uh, I know a lot of people are. And you can find tons of scales. Of course, they're not going to be fast swap like this one, but it doesn't take much more time to change the scales on something like this. And that's like I said, this is just my opinion, guys. And like I said, I, I do have personal experience, and I felt I owed it to my friend to let the public know that he did um, get pretty severely injured. And I mean, not life and death threatening, but you know, he did get a pretty good gash uh, that I'm sure affected him for some time. And like I said, every time I put this knife in my pocket now, I think about that and it makes me not want to carry this knife. So I honestly don't know that this knife will be sticking around for me. Uh, I'm not really sure what to do with it because what do you do with a knife that you think is potentially dangerous? Uh, so unfortunately, we're going to end this on not the uh, best of notes, um, but, you know, guys, stay tuned. We'll maybe do some more EDC videos or try and catch up with some more knife review videos. I know I have a ton of knives that need to get out and get reviewed. So uh, you guys stay tuned and uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye.